Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grave. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. Now how everybody be do this wonderful. Pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer, brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. I'm experiencing some technical difficulties with regards to internet this morning, so things are moving a bit slower than they normally would, but we will get this done in Jesus' name. That's the one thing we know is going to happen indeed. I hope you're having a wonderful day where you are. Started here in Barbados, nice and warm and sunny, with some cool rain to keep things just the right amount of heat, I think, so far in the morning. Sprinkles of rain since I've been getting up and all through the night, actually. It's been lovely here. I hope the weather condition is fine where you are this morning. We're going to kick things off this morning with one entitled, Gentle Shepherd, Come and Lead Us. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Find our way 
Title Gentle Shepherd Come and Lead Us with singers Sam Robson, Lisansi Changwe, and Evan Sanders. Original hymn there, of course, by written by Bill Gators. Mm -hmm. Just their retake of that one. We're going to continue then getting our words here up on screen for today, June the 26th in 2024. Let's see if I could make that happen here in three, two, and I got this one. There we go. <clears throat> Pardon me, throat feeling a bit scratchy this morning. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Words from Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. Using versicle 2 on page 35, if you are following along in your books of common prayer. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayer of intent, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through to 8. Let's have a listen. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph for the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in Psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we may have committed things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, <clears throat> to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon, and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in our goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our Psalms, and our Psalms this morning comes from Psalm 101 and Psalm 109, verses 1 to 4 and 20 to 30. And leading us in the reading of the Psalm this morning is Mrs. Cherie King. Let's have a listen. Good morning. The Psalms for today are Psalms 101 and Psalm 109. Verse 1 to 4 and 20 to 30. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing praises. I will strive to follow a blameless course. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with sincerity of heart within my house. I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the doers of evil deeds. They shall not remain with me. A crooked heart shall be far from me. 
I will not know evil. Those who in secret slander their neighbors, I will destroy. Those who have a heart to look and a proud heart, I cannot abide. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. And only those who lead a blameless life shall be my servants. Those who act deceitfully shall not dwell in my house, and those who tell lies shall not continue in my sight. I will soon destroy all the wicked in the land, that I may root all evildoers from the city of the Lord. Psalm 109 Hold not your tongue, O God, of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked, the mouth of the deceitful, is opened against me. They speak to me with a lying tongue. They encompass me with hateful words and fight against me without a cause. Despite my love, they accuse me. But as for me, I pray for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. But you, O Lord my God, O deal with me according to your name. For your tender mercy's sake, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I have faded away like a shadow when it lengthens. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh is wasted and gone. I have become a reproach to them. They see and shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. Save me for your mercy's sake. Let them know that this is your hand, that you, O Lord, have done it. They may curse, but you will bless. Let those who rise up against me be put to shame, and a servant will rejoice. Let my accusers be clothed with disgrace, and wrap themselves in their shame as in a cloak. I will give great thanks to the Lord with my mouth. In the midst of the multitude will I praise him, because he stands at the right hand of the needy, to save his life from those who would condemn him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We want to thank Ms. Cherie for leading us in the reading of the Psalms for this morning. And we want to wish her a happy birthday. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of Christ's Glory, based on Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel, the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 through to 16. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idly in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idly all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. 
When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last work only for one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I chose to give to the last the same as I give to you. For I, am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Miss Cherie for leading us in the reading and the psalm. And we want to wish her a happy and blessed birthday today. Getting our words back here up on screen then, Matthew chapter 20 verse 1 through to 16. This of course a continuation of what the kingdom of God is like. And let me tell you, I like these kingdom parables that are... <coughs> pardon me, that give us insight into what the kingdom of God really is in truth. Here's why I like it. I like it not only because it gives me information that I could look of what I could look forward to, but it also teaches me about kingdom living and what is expected of those who will live in the kingdom. And in Matthew chapter 20, Jesus is teaching about grace and greatness and service. And in Matthew chapter <clears throat> pardon me in Matthew chapter 20 verse 1 to 16 what Jesus is talking about is the parable of the workers in the vineyard the landowner of course who who has workers coming in at different point of the day now the whole issue behind this parable is well it's not an issue but the whole purpose behind the parable is to show persons that Early or late, getting into the kingdom is still going to be valid and worth it. So Jesus begins with the parable of the landowner workers who comes first of all early in the morning. So like many of Jesus' parable, this story is about employers and those who work for the employer. So Jesus will use this story to answer the question asked in Matthew chapter 19 verse 7 where um, they replied, um, where Peter asked, if we have left everything and follow you, what shall we have? And yesterday we ended with Jesus telling them, well, you're going to have eternal life. You're going to have the best of the best. You're going to have 12 thrones to sit beside me to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And that is a beautiful thing in and of itself. And in addition to that, he's telling them, you know what? The, the wages for the labor that you are going to be receiving is going to be worth it completely. And the first is, of course, a promise of reward. Yes, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 20, that's where we hear the first will be last and the last will be first. And in all of that, it is easy for you to understand that Jesus is saying, okay, stick with it and you're going to get your just desserts. Um, in addition, Jesus goes further right when he brings this parable in to illustrate the principle of god's manner of rewarding and to show that it is not like man's practice of giving a reward for mankind what happens is that if you reach late to work you're going to be penalized if you come late for work and indeed if you start to do half day's work you're going to get half day's worth of wages if you come early in the morning and you start to work from early then it makes sense that you're going to get a full day's wage if i agree to pay you five dollars a day fifteen dollars a day for work twenty five dollars a day for work if i agree to pay you these numbers and you come early o'clock then you're going to get the whole day wage if you come three days before i mean three hours before the work day is ended you can't really expect to get the whole day's wage and that is how we view wages and labor in our time and in our kingdom. But Jesus is saying, that's not it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's not it. Jesus is saying that, you know what? Everybody who comes is going to get 
an even share of what is to be distributed. So the man who is giving out the jobs then hires laborers for his vineyard. The laborer, the landowner, went into the marketplace, which was a gathering place for those who were looking for work. And a man who wanted to work would come there first thing in the morning, early o'clock, bringing his tools, waiting for somebody to hire him. So they would ask about skill, they would ask about experience, and then they would get hired. So you would go there looking for a day's wage, unless, of course, once you get that first day job, you have a contract, then you know that you'll be picked up from there in the beginning. Clearly, this person who was the employer at this point, this person had work to be done, was looking for laborers and had so much work that after the first trip, there still was need for laborers afterwards. So throughout the day, the landowner continues to hire workers. Now, the first hour of the day or the early o'clock shift was a six o'clock one as according to what was tradition then. Early in the morning is literally at dawn, reckoned to be around six in the morning. So these workers hired at the very beginning of the workday agreed to work for one denarius a day. And that was the common daily wage for a workman, an entire normally, an entirely normal agreement. Yes, one denarius a day, that's a day's wage. You come six o'clock, you'll work until the day is finished, you get your wage. No problem. But then the owner of the, the land owner comes back at the third hour, which is 9 a.m. And he comes back at the sixth hour, which is 12 noon. He comes back at the 11th hour, which was about 5 the work day being a 12 hour work day ending at 6 p.m. So throughout the day, this landowner went back and forth to the place where laborers were to gather new workers. Yeah? He found some idling in the marketplace and so he hired them to come and work in his vineyard. Now, ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with the landowner coming to collect workers at whatever point of the day he feels. Hmm? That ain't wrong. If you have the work and you have the people, get the work done. That's what I always say. What is going to become a problem is when it is time for payment to take place. Hmm? When it is time for payment to take place, it's going to be a problem because he comes now to give the salary to the people. He comes for the ones who are at, who are hired at 11 o'clock or at the 11th hour, sorry. And the 11th hour people who only work one hour got a denarius. And then he comes to the people who were hired at the sixth hour, midday. And he paid the midday people one denarius. And he comes to the people who were hired the third hour, nine o'clock, and he pays them one denarius. And then he comes to the people who were hired at the first hour of the day, yes, which would be 6 a.m., who had been working for $12. And what does he agree to pay them? One denarius. That's what he agreed a day's labor was going to be what they agreed upon. Now, the man who come in at 11th hour and work one hour and got one denarius, he ain't got no problem. He did <laughs> he did a minimum amount of work for the day and is getting a full day's pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that ain't no problem. The problem comes in when the earliest workers of the day get the same day wage. The other workers hired throughout the day were not promised a specific wage only whatever is right. And so he paid them what he felt was right, a denarius. But if I work for 12 hours and you work for one, instinctively, I am going to get upset. I did more work than you. Why am I not receiving more money than you who did less work? That is how human beings think. Hmm? Obviously, those who began working late and get the whole day pay, elated about being paid first. The first workers, of course, they were supposing that they would receive more. The men who work for the Lanona all day saw that the men who work for only an hour came away from the pay table with the same money. I mean, if the landowner is paying these guys a full day's pay for one hour, then we definitely should be getting more. And it's interesting that the landowner chose this order of payment. The order of payment was important because if the first worker had been paid first, they would not have had time to develop the expectation that they deserve more. They would not have had time to see that they who work less were getting the same amount of wage. They would not have had time to criticize, critique, and judge what they thought would be right. You see it? But interestingly enough, the landowner did exactly what he promised. 
the landowner did exactly what he promised. He did not promise those hired at the eleventh hour or at the ninth hour or at the sixth hour or at the third hour anything. He promised those at the first hour that he would pay them a denarius for a day's work. And they got exactly what the landowner had promised a denarius a day. Their supposition of more pay. They're supposing that they were supposed to get more than they were promised is where the disappointment comes in. And that's the thing. They began to complain. After being paid, the men hire first took up their complaint to the landowner. They were offended that the landowner gave the men who work less equal to us who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Hmm? Hmm. And it is easy to sympathize with those who work all day. More work, more pay, right? No. More work, the promise pay. More work, the schedule pay. Yeah? I mean, they worked while the others were idle in the heat of the day, while the others shared themselves, but they were paid exactly the same. I could see it. Mm -mm. The Lanona reminded them he had been completely fair to them according to what they had agreed. He had done them no wrong. He had broken no promise. And the Lanona asked them, What? Well, if I wish to give this last man the same as you, what? Well, it's not my money. The landowner did nothing to explain why he did what he did. He simply tell them, this is as I wish it. This is my money. I could be generous with what is mine in as much as I want to be because it is mine. The reason for the landowner's generosity were completely in the landowner himself. It was not in the one who receives it. Hmm? And I love what the landowner asked it. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? I mean, this is my money. Can't I do what i supposed to do? And I love how he says it in verse 13. Friends, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree to work for me for the usual day wage? Take up what belongs to you and go. I didn't cheat you. I agreed to give you one denarius for a day's wage. And I give you one denarius for a day's wage. That you are criticizing and comparing yourself to other people. That's on you. I choose to give to this the least, the last, the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do with what I what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because of my generosity? And then he mentions again exactly what he mentions in the ending of yesterday's reading. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. The landowner rebukes the men for their jealousy and their resentment towards his generosity. And he strongly claims his right to do what he wants with what he says. He calls them out, telling them they got evil eye. They were being jealous. They had envious eye, looking and criticizing and comparing. Hmm? But you can't have evil eye or jealousy over something that doesn't belong to you. Hmm? And it's simple. It's a message for us. The parable being applied towards the principles of God's Reward. The last will be first and the first will be last. Many are called, few are chosen. Peter and the disciples who mentioned yesterday, we have given up a great deal to follow you. What, are, what is going to be our reward? This coming on the heels of Jesus telling the rich man yesterday, give up all we have and come and follow me. Peter wanted to know what they would get in return. And through this parable, Jesus was assuring Peter and the other disciples that there will be great rewards. Hmm? But the principle of many who are first will be last and the last will be first meant that God does not reward as man expects. And that's the thing. We have given up everything for you. Meant Peter was looking for a great reward. We have been with you in this journey. We have gone this whole course with you. We must be getting something better than he who is coming now at the ninth hour or at the twelfth hour. Hmm? Has to be. And sometimes we think like that. We are bold to profess, well, I have been a Christian from cradle to grave. Okay, congratulations. I am proud of you that you spent your whole life walking the faith and living it out according to God's law. Round of applause for you. But that does not disqualify the person who 15 minutes before they die, give their life to Christ. They're going to get the same salvation. Hmm? The salvation that Peter got at his death. Yeah? That Simon Peter got at his death was the same salvation that the thief on the cross who with his almost dying breath said to Jesus, have mercy on me and remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's the same 
reward. And it's not to say live your life how you want and wait until right before you die for you to do it because you might run out of time running risks like that. But what it means is the love of God is so far reaching and the generosity of God is so great hmm? that it cannot be measured in human standards. Human yardstick means nothing. So what? You've been a Christian from your small. Congratulations. I now come to understand Christianity and increase my love of Jesus around the age of 17. Somebody right this minute is listening to this broadcast as an adult older than I am and is now coming to understand and accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And whether you did it when you were 5, whether you did it when you were 15, whether you did it when you were 55 or 105, the salvation won for you through the promise of and the death of Jesus Christ, that is the same salvation. It ain't got no time limit. It ain't got no time frame. There is no expiration date. If you don't get it in your life by this time, you can't have it. No. That's what the parable is saying. The parable is saying, yes, that whether it be at the beginning of your life, in your youth, in your adulthood, your old age, or at the very end. Hmm? Grace and the reward of salvation is free and available to all who are willing to accept it at whatever stage of their existence. And it is not our job to compare or contrast, oh, but this one now become a Christian, oh, but this one now trying to do good. That's not your problem. If you are busy working on your salvation, you will not have time to criticize anybody else's journey or anybody's opportunities that they are taking in order to work out their relationship with God. I'm sorry. I get passionate about it because we as Christian people sometimes could be the harshest critics of other people who are trying to be Christians, not recognizing that we lose our Christianity when we do exactly that. Be busy keeping your heart and your mind set on Christ. Be busy winning others' hearts and minds for Christ. Instead of comparing and contrasting your walk to anybody else's, you can't walk their walk and they can't walk yours because it is not your road and it ain't your shoes. Focus on yours. Don't be like the workers who think they deserve more because of how much longer or how much more they thought they have done. Rejoice that you get what you were promised. And rejoice that others, be they early or late, can experience the same joys of the promise of salvation. It is the master's generosity to do with his rewards as he will. Be happy that your name is counted on the list when the reward is being given out. I think some of us will be surprised if we get to heaven when we die. We might be surprised to see the people who got in there before us or along with us. Our job is not to try to guard the riches of the kingdom and to hoard it for ourselves. Our job is to share it with as many as we can. That all May enjoy the promise of everlasting life. The last will be first. The first will be last. Amen. Let us continue with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified. He died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins and forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, proper seven. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set up, whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Together we say I call it for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we'd like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Mrs. Cherie King, Mr. Errol West, Miss Anselma Martinez, and Mr. Raymond Arthur. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you'll have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. In memoriam, we remember Miss Carmen Young, who will be celebrating her birthday today. We continue to give Almighty God thanks for those who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine. Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Kim, and Miss Jean. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aisley, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Janet, Miss Marley, Miss Toya, Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Amy, Miss Molly, and Miss Nelita. We remember and pray for Miss Betty. Miss Martha, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Ruby, Miss Jessica, Miss Janice, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Melancia, and Miss Marie. We pray for Miss Felicia, Miss Salome, Miss Glenda, Miss LaShawn, Miss Yolanda, Miss Del Marie, Miss Celestina, Miss Barbara, Miss Loretta, Miss Lena, Miss Agnes, Miss Priscilla, Miss Joyce Lynn, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Arlet, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Sonia, Miss Petrona. We remember and pray for Miss Veroline, Miss Caroline, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alair, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Jane, Miss Camille, Miss Daisha, Miss June, Miss Elaine, Miss Hilda, Miss Debbie, Miss Carol, Miss Fiona, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, Miss Marcia, Miss Joyce, Miss Kieran, Miss Marie W. Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Kelia, Miss Belina, Reverend Delona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elba, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Lynette, Miss Natalie, Miss Sheila, Miss Catherine, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Reverend Linda, Miss Shelma Dean, Miss Charlene, Miss Del Marine, 
Miss Irene, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Tracy, Miss Julie P, Miss Dorothy B, Miss Susan, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Julianne, Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, Miss Megan, Miss Laurel, and Miss Patricia. We continue to remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenneth, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddie, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, and Mr. Benham. We pray for Mr. Ewart, Mr. Salvador, Mr. Hubert, Mr. <coughs> Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Pablo, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, and Mr. Sean. We pray for Mr. Peter H., Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Michael Sobranis, Mr. Michael Salmon, Sir Colvin, Mr. Donald, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Russell, and Father Constancio. And pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Mr. G. Mar, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Dave, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, Mr. Warren, Mr. Franz, Mr. Omar, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Irving, Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Devin, Mr. Anigi, Mr. Ivan, Mr. Ted, Mr. Paul, Mr. Clayton, and Bishop Wright. prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who care for the infirm in at-home circumstances. We pray for those who care for the infirm in private and public institutions for the protection and the enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for Dr. Zidalgo, Molina, Mugia, Arnold Manzanero, Ariaga, Shogreen, Ken, Arana, Joseph, Hector Lawrence, Sosa, Young, Cuellar, Flores, and Rosado. We pray for Ms. McKinney, Ms. Gil, Ms. Herrera, Nurse Avell, Nurse Chevy, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Lima, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ava, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Judy, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Cadogan, and Nurse Lexi. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who, for whatever reason, cannot find words to pray for themselves. We join in praying for them, praying together. Heavenly Father, give her of life and help, comfort and relieve your sick servants. We give you a power of healing to those who minister to their needs. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Chantel Daly, the family of Mr. Michael Martinez, the family of Miss Janet Mean, the family of Miss Catherine Dawson, the family of Miss Ardek Pillai, the family of Mr. Nelson Bo, the family of Mr. Alvin Savior. Pray for comfort for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for a meal. For Elisa, Tammy, Randolph, Ashley, Angel, Garrick, Page, Freedom, Karina, Ria, Rihanna, Austin, Courtney, Akua, Kai, Arian, Jamal, Tiffany, and Kishanti. We pray for our loved ones in the military. We pray for Jason, Charles X, Derek, Prince, Charles C, Candy, Sam, Christopher, Gavin, and Nisha. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. We pray for the poor, the elderly, people in hospice care. People who live in homeless shelters, we pray for those who live in safe houses, we pray for those who face threat of abuse of any kind, we pray for those who are struggling with cancer, various forms and stages, we pray for those battling with HIV and AIDS and its complications, we pray for those battling with ailments such as lupus and MS, we continue to pray for those who are faced with mental health challenges. We pray for those who are battling with substance abuse issues and their related ailments. We remember especially our children who are in homes that have been separated by divorce, feeling that it is their fault.
why these things are happening and feeling that you have to choose sides between your parents who pray for God's provision and protection. Yes. In our prayers, we continue to pray for our security forces. We pray for the government, we pray for the churches, the private sector, all persons in position of public trust and authority. We pray for all non governmental organizations and everyone involved in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community who is ravaged by the effects of natural disaster, those who are dealing with the effects of war and civil unrest, our persons who are in the various stages of recovery. We pray for them, even as we pray for ourselves and our region, against the threat of wars and civil unrest, and indeed for protection against the ravages of natural disaster, especially during this hurricane season. Our region. For the prayers of our hearts that God is careful of confess, we pray that Almighty God will We conclude our intercession this morning by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of the laws and the laws of your commandments. But under your protection, now and ever, we may be preserved in heaven and soul. In Jesus Christ, God. My means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to be teaching you in your presence, as well as in the presence of Almighty God. I want to thank you for joining me this morning and for, you know, tolerating me. I think our internet this morning is a bit splotchy because we've been having some rain. Yes, the sun is shining, but we've been having some heavy rains here in Barbados. I understand it's raining at home as well in certain parts of the country. Please do keep yourself safe if you're going to leave um, home. If you have to leave home, which I know most of us have to do for work in home, mm -hmm. please be safe if you're going to be outside like that. A reminder of our broadcast schedule for today. Today is Wednesday. So following this broadcast, we have Monday prayers at the evening prayer at 5.30 and compliant at 9 p.m. to close of the day. There was a question from somebody earlier. They sent me a message to ask me how things were going. I am in Barbados for a preaching engagement. It is the Patronal Festival of the Church, the Parish Church of St. Peter. And this week we're celebrating the Patronal Festival for the Feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. And so I'm here to preach for that. I've been preaching every night since Sunday and it's been going very well. We've been looking at the theme for the Patronal Festival is actually making a new turn what a mighty God we serve. And we've been looking at Bible characters and the U-turns they made in their lives inspired by the presence of God's Holy Spirit and how making a U-turn changed their life from one thing to a new something for the glory of God. And so we've been looking at that and it's been going well according to me. Nobody has walked out on the sermon and nobody threw a shoe at me. So I'm hoping that it is going <laughs> well indeed for them as well. We've looked at Zacchaeus. We have looked at, uh, last night we looked at Rehab, and tonight we're going to look at Samson and the U-turn that he made. And of course, it is examining where the person went wrong with God and what change they made to come back in right order and the reward that came once they made the right choice. So that's what I'm doing here in Barbados. Thank you for asking and thank you for your prayers as well. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Seek us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all now and for your The Lord be with you. Let us bless you. Thanks. We're going to wrap up this morning with this one entitled, This is My Father's World. I know we hear it more than once on this program, but I can't get over it any at all. This is my Father's World. He chooses to do with his blessings and his mercy whatever he chooses to do. My job is not to compare what others have. My job is to be thankful for what I have. 
as he has blessed me. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye for now. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the Wonderful.